Welcome back. Thank you for staying with the broadcast. The police band of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force is observing a not so happy anniversary after surpassing a major milestone. One member of the band tells Hot 7 News that instead of celebrating, the band members are faced with uncertainty as they search for a home to call their own. An anniversary is a time for celebration and reflection, and with 72 years to look back on, one would think that said celebration and reflection would be on a large scale. However, this is not the case with the police band of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. The band was formed on the 18th of June, 1947, with only six male members led by the late Nathaniel Griffith. On Tuesday, the group observed its 72nd anniversary, keyword being observed and not celebrated because according to band inspector Dylan St. Jules, there is not much to be happy about in this present time. Inspector St. Jules said on this big day, his team is homeless. You might be wondering why I'm not smiling. It's not because everything is bad, but um, presently we don't have a home. And I think that's the best way I should start this interview, by saying we don't have a home. Unfortunately, our ban, our ban practice quarters was decommissioned because it was not fitting for the work standards. And today we are still searching for a venue with minimum requirement to allow us to continue the great work we've been doing for the last 72 years. So that's where we are presently. Inspector St. Jules said over the years, the band has gone through numerous challenges. However, their accomplishments have by far surpassed the challenges. We have accomplished a lot as a band. Um, over the 72 years, we have been able to to do a lot for, for music in St. Lucia, and not just music, but um, education. Um, and I, I want to see community policing. Uh, um, the Royal St. Lucia Police Band has contributed a lot to St. Lucia and the St. Lucian citizenry. However, presently we are struggling to get an ideal location because even if you retrofit a place for an institution like ours for us to really maximize the kind of um, um, work we can produce for St. Lucia we would really need a, a proper facility to, 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 to be able to contribute not only to just music on the surface we're talking about education young people you know education for maybe um, tertiary education level students. It's more than just seeing music on the surface. On Independence Day this year, the police band put on an impressive show which wowed the nation and the diaspora. Inspector St. Jules said, This was just one event which shows that despite the odds, the love of the job is motivation to deliver only the best. The police band is, is an institution that works for St. Lucia. We, we, they, we have motivated individuals and although we are going through some trying period, the guys are, 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 are individual, individually motivated to serve their country. We have proud St. Lucian, Royal St. Lucia Police Band men who are motivated to do their work for the country. However, we are in a situation where we do not have all the facility needed, all the facilities needed. But it wouldn't stop us. The 40th anniversary was significant to St. Lucia, and the guys came through and thought it was necessary to, to, to contribute. You could, you could have seen the, 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 the spectacle, the interest. Okay? Um, the majority of St. Lucians were, were, were happy with, 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 with the production, and not only St. Lucians, visitors. The inspector said one can only imagine what they could achieve when they get their facility that they can call their own. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. They might not have a home to call their own, but the Royal St. Lucia Police Band has certainly played their way into the hearts of St. Lucia, earning the right to be called a St. Lucian treasure. To commemorate their 72nd anniversary, the Hot 7 News team took to the streets to allow members of the public to pay homage to the band. I'm saying um, happy birthday to the, um, well not birthday, but happy anniversary to the Royal St. Lucia Police Music Band. I heard that they are 72 years and running. The last 
Well, the last review I heard from them was when they went over to foreign and they, well, I heard they mash up the place. It was a success. Plus for our own independence, I mean, the match on the road was, for me it was brilliant, I really love to see it, so I wish them the best, you know, continue bringing good music, uh, keep, you know, playing those instruments, love the way they're doing it, and, uh, and I also heard that the bass is, um, well, under reconstruction for the world, so i hoping that, you know, they speed up the process, you know, so that we can continue to just keep giving us the same good vibes that we keep getting from them. Yeah, I want to send out lots of love to the Royal St. Lucia Police Band, celebrating 72 years in existence. All, always uh, excellent musicians, always doing St. Lucia service at whatever events that they, that they, they, they are part of. So again, hats off to you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. I know the, the situation is kind of difficult for you guys right now, but more power to you. Keep playing the music that we love and, you know, keep making St. Lucia and St. Lucians proud with what you do. Happy anniversary. First of all, let me wish the, the police band a very happy birthday. And they have been an integral part of uh, St. Lucia and the mentality of St. Lucians as far as music is concerned. They are very good at music and they are even classical at music. But as far as I understand, they do not have a fixed place of abode right now. So what I'm saying, it is important that the government find a place where the police band, which has played such an important role in St. Lucia, to have a fixed place of board where they can practice their music. With such sweet sensation that they always give to us, the public, I think they deserve a better place to call their home. But with everything else, happy birthday to you guys. You're doing an excellent job. Continue the work and hope that they find a new home for you guys. With all my heart, I wish to congratulate the St. Lucia Police Band for a job well done all throughout the years. I remember as a young um, schoolboy, they used to go all around, you know, and of course, the, I know to me it was a Bajan fellow who was the bandmaster. So all the best to them, and I hope that the government take into consideration and assist them in whatever needs they may have. So, congratulations and all the best to St. Lucia Police Band. They make us all happy all the time. To me, the St. Lucia Police Band is the best band in the Caribbean and one of the best in the world. Motorists who traverse the city's streets will surely be eyeing the month of September following an announcement from the Castries Mayor that parking terminals will be installed and functional by then. During a Wednesday morning press conference, the Mayor gave a much-anticipated update on the project. He said although he is awaiting permission to install the terminals from the DCA, the project is progressing smoothly. We're looking at a target date of September and we should have these terminals installed and, and running. Um, we are not going to stop there because we now have a, a work in progress where we find that we are looking parking overall, not only to be in the north, but even south and so on. What we are working on presently is a situation where you find people will now be able to use their phone. So if I give an example that we have cricket at base with you, um, you'll be able to go to your phone, whether in cast is any part, and scan and get a parking spot. And also, you'll be able to pay online. Mayor Francis said efforts and plans are being made to ensure that the parking nightmares which occur at mass crowd events will become a thing of the past. He said one plan in particular could be beneficial to land and property owners. When we have jars, we have anything up north and people parking everywhere and so on, that will be something of the, of the, of the past. So we'll have free, so you know you could leave your, your home at whatever time, you have to rush to go anywhere. If something starts at seven, you, you go there since three o'clock in the afternoon to see where you could park. That is something that we're going to rectify for you. The, uh, the other situation is that um, the minister now has uh, the authority to declare any area a parking area. 
So, for example, if you have a, if something is happening in Grizzly and you have a, a yard large enough to to accommodate vehicles, the minister could declare that area a parking area. And obviously, it's not that they are, they are, they are taking over your land. You will be compensated any whatever happened there. So that is um, the good news we have on parking island wide because any place they're going to have activities, we can do that. The mayor said these efforts are necessary in order to create some much needed revenue to undertake essential works in and around the city. As Team St. Lucia gears up to take on the taste of the Caribbean culinary competition in Miami, stated for the 21st to the 25th of June, a logistics meeting was held on the 19th of June to provide the participants with all relevant information needed before traveling. Manager of Team St. Lucia, Richardson Skinner, is of the opinion that the crop of chefs headed to this year's showing is what it takes to bring home gold for St. Lucia. Solaj Alfred tells us more in this report. A logistics meeting held on June 19th at the Coco Palm Conference Room sought to get members of the St. Lucia culinary team up to speed on the do's and don'ts of travel, as the team gears up to participate in the Taste of the Caribbean competition to be held in Miami from June 21st to 25th. Chairperson of the Culinary Committee, Orlando Satchel, says as ambassadors of the island, the chefs were given a breakdown of their responsibilities, mannerisms, and what is expected of them throughout the culinary journey. We're actually doing a logistic conversation today to educate our, um, our team members of their responsibility when they leave the island, to understand what their responsibility when they meet and greet, um, and understand what their, their role is to do when they go out to the U.S. Um, again, that, that said, being said, they're also there to cook and they're there to hopefully showcase the best of St. Lucia and the best of the Caribbean. Um, I think this um, program is this is the biggest group we've ever taken, so obviously we've raised some funds to do that. It's important to make sure that they, they understand the value of what they're doing. We're promoting the Caribbean cuisine. Um, in the Caribbean, we have not taken that on as an island, we have not showcased enough of our island cuisine. So I'm hoping that these guys are going to be ambassadors of St. Lucia and ambassadors of the Cuisine Caribbean when they come back. Participating chef Steffi Marius says the competition will put to test the culmination of months of hard work and training. She expresses her hope for success for Team St. Lucia. We've been training for a few months. We've had um, intense training with our chef, Chef Skinner, where we had to specialize on our personal dishes. We had to go in depth on how to execute our dishes um, within the time frame and we had to practice like we were in Miami. Right. So between um, our normal work at our various resorts and coming at Coco Palm to train, it was intense but we all made the effort to put in our 100% so that we can come out with the goal. Setting the teams apart and excelling in the competition comes down to knowing what the judges are looking for. Team St. Lucia manager Richardson Skinner says the unique elements of St. Lucian cuisine will not be lost in the mix. However, a holistic approach to Caribbean tastes will be utilized in hopes of securing the win. If you're first going to enter the competition, the first thing you want to do is highlight your island. The judges, however, would advise you that is not necessarily what they're looking for. So you want to bring a taste of your island. So if there's anything that is unique to your island, you would want to bring that element to your dish. However, you have to broaden the spectrum into the Caribbean because this is what they want to see. They would remind you over and over it's the taste of the Caribbean, it's not the taste of a specific island. So any influence that you have must be Caribbean, but obviously, we, we took our green fig and salt fish and we're going to create something with that. Um, and everything that we've done so far is trying to take the best of what we have locally and be able to go and stand on, on that international stage and showcase it. So we're very much going to showcase our own. The logistic workshop was attended by all participants and facilitated by the culinary committee, looking to ensure a seamless journey of the chefs hoping to bring home the gold. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sola Jalford. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News. Stay with us. There's more news coming up after the break.